hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italian. I'm Jim Burrow. I'm Marilyn Burrow. And we're going to be talking about food. We're going to give you some recipes. Uh, we're going to be talking about some local restaurants in the area. We're going to give you some input on some new products that are out there that you might be interested in. And we're going to do whatever. But we're basically, we're going to have a good time discussing food and what goes into our bellies. And that's all important. So, first thing, Marilyn, um, let's talk about the farmer's market uh, and what's available at the farmer's market this week. Well, first of all, I think your first recipe really was based on some farmer market buying of last week's, or, you know, previously. The but this week we're going to have kohl kohlrabi and some strawberries and some raspberries. I think they have apricots, freshly picked uh, cherries. They have all kinds of lettuces. They have all kinds of, you know, zucchini and uh, a yellow squash and, and green squash. So there's everything you can make. You're missing one of the products that you really don't like. Which is what? Beans, green beans, green and beans yellow. and yellow I beans. Love I them like too. them. I, I, although the other day we went out to uh, um, lunch and had them sliced uh, very thinly and not cooked in a salad, and I thought that was a great use of the fresh beans. That that's another way of using them without steaming them or cooking them. What she's telling you. She'd rather have somebody else cook them except me, right? Well, no, I think they get a little tough when you steam them or cook them. So if they're mm. really fresh, She's being nice. if they're really fresh and you cut them uh, very thinly now right. uh, at a diagonal, uh, they were very good in the salad. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. You mentioned kohlrabi. A lot of people don't know what kohlrabi is or what to do with it. Uh, kohlrabi is a, ger a German name. Coal meaning cabbage, cabbage. and uh, rabi meaning broccoli. So it's a uh, no, it was turnips, a turnip. Turnip, excuse me, and uh, and and you and you get them, and they look like Sputnik, little, little Sputnik. You know, but, you people, you young people don't know what Sputniks are, but, but it, it, it's an odd shape. In, in uh, but you have to peel them, and you can cut them up. They're actually very good, just fresh. Right. And again, put in a salad and cut correctly. You can put them in a slaw, make a slaw right. dressing, put some apples in there, and uh, and they're, they're they're very 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 good. Now, got to talk another thing about a farmers market. We went to a new farmers market this weekend. We did, uh, and we had fresh local corn, which, which surprised both of us. We were, I thought I thought this is going to be a disaster. But yeah. it wasn't. It was, it was very, very good. Earliest we've ever had local corn. We went to a place called Toro Run Wineries, and they on Friday between 3 and 7, they have a very They're small. They're going to do a small farmer's market. I think it'll grow, though, Jim, as, as, as the season it, goes along well, here. That corn was outstanding. And they had wonderful broccoli, too. Right, And you can have a, a barbecue there. Right. Chicken barbecue. And, now, of course, is, you can do wine tasting, too, if you right. wanted to. But <laughs> and this is located on Route 89. You're going to go out 89 going toward Ithaca. And remember, there used to be an Amish place that uh, sold furniture and that type it's of thing. It's called, it's Zw Zwick Road, right. actually, if you turn right on Zwick Road. And you go, you, you turn right, and then you go up the hill. And I, I'm telling you, the most beautiful view... Of oh, Cuba Cuba Lake. Lake. You're yes. looking in a northeast direction, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and so we were we were impressed. We didn't taste the wines. We understand the wines are available there, and they also are available in uh, Rochester at the Wegman Liquor Store. So you might want to try it out on Friday. Uh, so try the, try that out. Okay. Now we're going to get to the first recipe, uh, and we're going to give you a little little video, and I'm going to comment on it. A, and this is a wonderful world. Pasta primavera. Doesn't that just roll off your... And primavera meaning spring. That's right. But we're pa a little past spring. But it's the earlier vegetables that you use. Absolutely. In primavera. Absolutely. And we're going to use a product. The pasta is a, a Barilla Plus. And Barilla Plus is a product that uh, is made up of, a lot, of not just semolina. It's got twice the amount... Of a fiber, fiber in it. 
It's got lentils in it. It's got semolina, chickpeas, barley, svelte, egg whites. And it takes a little longer to cook, but you cannot tell the difference between this and complete, you know. The only thing you have to be extremely careful with is that if you're going to put it back in the pot with your sauce or something, you really have to undercook it because there is, it doesn't have a long time like semolina pasta does. It, it, it can get overcooked very quickly. So this is something where you really need to taste it, undercook it before you heat it up with your sauce. And so we're going to show you this, and our producer and director and owner, uh -huh. Jim uh, uh. Sanacropi, has had, like, we, we have him, that's the only reason he comes over, because he fills it <laughs> and eats it. He <laughs> says it was good. very good. So this is a good recipe. So uh -huh. here we go. All right. Uh, of course, I have to have a, a little sip. A of, little sip of wine well, always wine. helps cooking. Right. So I've... Uh, I've boiled the water. I'm adding uh, some salt uh, to it. That's uh, always important to your taste absolutely. is to make sure that you absolutely. have salted water. Yep. So we're going to let that boil, and we're going to put this uh, pasta in. There is that uh, Barilla Primavera. Or the uh, plus. The Barilla plus, plus, Excuse yes. me. And we'll bring that to boil. We're probably going to cook this for about, when we want it al dente, really al dente, about seven six to seven minutes you might want to we'll try to taste it uh, uh to give a feeling of a just before it's ready jim times it i'm a taster but then i learned that at the knee of my mother so i'm the taster she's the pasta <laughs> she does a lot better job than i do with it okay but i learned very young all right so now we take it some oil and we put that in saute get that hot get that warm on a medium heat now i'm going to take some these are scallions that we got from the farmer's market and we're going to slice them and, uh, and, and, you know, very randomly. It doesn't make, make much difference of, uh, you know, the, the, the cut of them. Uh, but you want to get them all cut up. And right now, these, these, these scallions or whatever you want to call them are absolutely wonderful. They're sweet and uh, they're really good. So there I'm going to put them on in there. I, I love these little uh, cork. Uh, bamboo bamboo uh, uh, cooking uh, uh, slicing boards that we've got and they're easy to get they're everything. easy to clean right. also which is really nice right so now I'm going to take my frustration on bang bang mm -hmm. I'm doing the garlic there we go more oh yeah okay cut two more one more there now we got all the garlic done we're gonna chop that up a bit and that'll go on into the uh, into the uh, saute plant pan Okay, so easy, right? Look at that. All right, shake that around a bit. You gonna shake it, Jim? Oh, come on, shake it. <laughs> right. I guess he's not. I guess Jim isn't gonna shake. Yeah, right. well, well, he's gonna stir, stir it. it. That's okay. Okay. Shake. And a shake. Also, All right. so that's good. Stir and a shake, and a couple of swear words maybe, and uh, got that going. So now we got to add some of the wonderful uh, vegetables. Uh, first of all, asparagus. Uh, what what you what you do is you take asparagus, one asparagus, and and pu pull it where it breaks. That's the point where you want to cut the rest and of your asparagus. And get rid of that woody part because woody that part won't on the cook. bottom. Okay. So Very those well. are now all ready uh, to put in. But let's cut them into little smaller pieces. Okay. Watch this. Yeah. And I do it at a little angle. There. Okay. This doesn't. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So easy. And the wonderful, fresh asparagus, local asparagus from the farmer's market. The season is about over with the asparagus. So, but, uh, again, you can use whatever's available yes, also. Yes, you don't need, yeah. I mean, that's the wonderful part about this pasta. It doesn't need to be the same vegetables all the time. It's what you have, what you like, and what is fresh. We keep preaching. Cook and use what you want to use and what looks good to you. I've also just put in, again from the farmer's market, some uh, snap peas. You eat the whole thing, it's like a pea pod. So we got the broccoli, the pea pods, the garlic, the scallions. We're gonna add a little salt to it, okay? And, uh, and a little pepper, hot pepper. Uh, first we're gonna use freshly ground pepper. And hopefully, if I didn't forget, 
we should put some uh, red pepper flakes. Aha! Yes, there they are. Some nice red pepper flakes in there. Okay. So we got that done. Now uh, we're going to uh, add some herbs. We're, we've got some parsley, and we have that is basil that I've rolled up, and I'm sh what they call chiffonading it. That's an interesting word, chiffonading it. So cutting it in slim and slim pieces. Pieces, right? The other product that we're going to put in there again this time of the year, the wonderful fresh mint and there's all different kinds of mint that you can use in this uh, and we're going to do the same thing with the mint and we're going to add that to uh, to this uh, this dish stir it around again this, you can I can't you smell the aroma it almost <laughs> comes right out of the uh, yeah there oh now what I'm doing here is I'm Saving some of the pasta water that I'm going to use in this dish, and I put that aside. The uh, the pasta is finished. I drain it. It's al dente. Okay, look at there. My right, now make sure don't do not. I repeat, do not run cold water. Don't over. Rin don't ever rinse your don't pasta. Ever. Right. The starchy. The reason you use the water that it was cooked in is that it is a little bit starchy from what the ingredients, and that helps thicken whatever sauce you have. So that's why you want to use the pasta water. I'm just cleaning out what left of uh, mm -hmm. the pasta is in there. So uh, we're gonna uh, stir that together, and this is this is dish is almost complete. A really a e easy dish, dish to make. We're adding the pasta water that I'd saved, that uh, we boiled the... Uh, and that the, sort of evaporates and thickens yep. as, as, as right. you finish the cooking. Right. Now we're going to add the herbs, the mint, and uh, the basil. We'll stir that together. Isn't that, look at how nice and pretty that is, the, uh, the, the green, green and the white. Marilyn, I think we need some red in there somewhere along the oh, line. I think you'll probably do that. Uh, and what what I'm adding now is uh, s some pesto uh, that I freeze. I, we we did that. We talked We've about. We've talked this. about pesto a few times about freezing them. We had a we had the garlic scapes and and uh, arugula, but That's regular the one I use, okay. and uh, you know regular pesto as we get into basil season. You again making your pesto with what ingredients you have or what you like right now we're going to uh we're going to take some 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 rigata we're going to take about a cup of rigata that's going to make it nice and creamy to add that to it i say a cup of rigata whatever i i feels looks like good i put it in there okay could be a little less could be a little more you stir that stir that around and uh, now it, this is going to add some, some, some creamy texture to right. it. And I'm using skim rigata. You can use, uh, uh, you know. You could use full or partial right. skim. I mean, there's all kinds of products out there. It's what you like, right. again. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add some Parmigiano-Reggiano grated. And then we are going to uh, uh, use some lemon zest. Where is that lemon zest? Well. Oh, we got the tomatoes. I can't open up the tomatoes. These are old <laughs> sherry tomatoes. I can't open them all. That's what happens when oh, you wow. get old. <laughs> At least you know they're fresh. So we're gonna we're taking a moment's respite till I aha. There we go. Now we Success. have a look at there. See see how much that nice color. Of the uh, red tomato adds to it, so we're gonna add that up. Do a little bit more stirring, and uh, this is coming to a uh, to a time when we're gonna be able to use it. Okay, Jim, add the. Uh, gonna add a little Just bit more. Putting a little more cheese, and again to your taste. Again, that's what it's all about. And don't forget the lemon zest, Jim. Jim, ah. We've got some Asiago cheese, and I'm taking my uh, potato peeler, 
and I'm shredding or shaving some Asiago over the top of that just to give it a yin and yang, a little different contrast. And that's going to melt into that cheese and uh, it'll, be, it'll be very, very good. And now the... Uh, There's the lemon zest. Lemon zest. And that's a zester. You, everyone should have a zester. You can zest... Well, you can use that even to grate cheese. Cheese, you can you can grate uh, garlic on it. Right. You can also hurt your knuckles that way. A little bit more salt and pepper to taste. A little bit more taste. salt. And last but not least, where's the olive oil, Jimmy? Come on, the olive oil. There just, is the olive oil. Some extra virgin a little, over the top. I'd, it's always nice to finish your dish with fresh. Uh, olive oil and, and there it is it's finished ready to eat and uh, remember the wine and there. bon appetit bon appetit <laughs> nice dish easy to make using the wonderful fresh vegetables that are available so and we well. do have that recipe it, it's on the home page uh, the show's home page fingerlakes1.com yes and, plus some other recipes so mm -hmm. you can find the, that recipe there right now, before we get into another recipe, I want to talk about uh, some of the area restaurants uh, that we have here. One, Marilyn, uh, you and I, we went to Auburn. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, Bambino's. We yes, went to see, we a, see a play. And we had dinner at Bambino's before we went. And they had a fixed price dinner. They're we doing this for the, for the shows that are over there. There's now um, three shows going on. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And this, for $20, let me tell you what you get. This is, all, the, number one, the restaurant's a good restaurant. And what they give you is a glass of wine, either white or red. They give you an appetizer. In my case, I had uh, calamari. Marilyn had a salad. Then you have a choice of an entree of either steak, uh, or you can have, well, I had fish, a fillet of sole. We sol. had fillet of sole, right. but they also had a pea uh, ravioli. They they make their raviolis. They make their own raviolis, which are and they're the incredible. best raviolis around. And then for dessert, uh, you had a choice between creme uh, brulee or panna cotta. Panna cotta. I, and a couple of weeks ago, I I made panna cotta, all for twenty dollars. Great place. You should go there, and uh, it's really really good. Other two places I want to mention, or three places I want to mention here in town that have uh, just opened or are about to open. One is Opus, which is right next to Cosentino's uh, Flower, and, uh, Flower they, yeah. and they have uh, sandwiches and home-baked goods and uh, wonderful coffees. So that's open. Uh, as of uh, July 9th at 9 o'clock, uh, Blake's Breakfast and Lunch Company is opening up, which again is on Fall Street uh, in the middle of the block, which used to be, what was it, Jeremy's, Marilyn? Something like that. Jeremy's. Yeah. And then down uh, down the way on Fall Street, who will be opening up shortly, is Little Italy. And that mm -hmm. used to be over in the other plaza, and they've come here. They put a lot of money, and they put a lot of effort into the and thing. They'll be right next to right. Women's Rights uh, National Historical Park. Right. So. Uh, all of a sudden, we've become a downtown. You, you've got all kinds of <laughs> places to eat, but that's and that's great because it does bring people and it gives them opportunity to stay in town a little bit longer. Right. So uh, you know, uh, try and Little Italy. We've eaten there before, and that that is very good. Uh, we are running out of time, but I want to also show you something, and I. I like box wines. People usually stick up their noses to box wine, but it's a great idea. But it, it, yeah, it is. And you, the, yeah, the reason you like it is because you, it, when you just have one glass, the air doesn't get into a boxed wine, so your wine isn't going to spoil. So for people that aren't going to drink a whole bottle of wine, or whatever, it really does make a, a nice product. It really does. And, you know, they ha now have uh, black boxes as one of them. 
is a good uh, 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 wine that they, they, they sell in the box. So they, it got a bad reputation because of some of the lower end types of it. But you should try it. Now, that, number one, it's, it, 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 I want to present, go ahead and try some of these bags. If you go to Amy Padula, she'll sell it to you with a, she, she's a, she's a wine snob anyways. But anyway, she'll sell <laughs> But she's it. wonderful. She she's has wonderful. them and she, she has, has great wines. And she has, you know, uh, some wines that are a little bit more expensive, but she always has some very good value wines in her store. Now. Look what, what Jim the, did. What He's is recycling this? now in his old Another age. use for that box wine that you buy. After you finish with it, uh, you have a, a very heavy plastic like this, and you got a little nozzle on the end where you pour the wine out. You pop out the nozzle, you half fill it with water, and here we are in the summer. You wanna you wanna go on a picnic or something? It's all it, you put it in the freezer, you freeze it, and now you have something something to put in your cooler that isn't going to get anything wet right. and you've recycled the inside of your box wine right so i don't know jim's getting very frugal in his old age or, or uh, recycling marilyn i the <laughs> only reason i wanted to do that because i wanted to talk about box wine i know wine. you did okay okay so that's what, what what it's all about now we have we have some other uh, recipes on the website that yeah we, we never got all the recipes but they're on the website and what what do we have this week on the website? We have uh, pork and portobello uh, uh, burgers. Burgers You're that were very a good. Portobello with pork. We've got uh, salmon cakes. Salmon cakes that which were which are wonderful. so so easy to make. So uh, take a look at those, and uh, we might next time around I might talk to you about them. I I don't know, but anyways, try them. So I think we've. Uh, We've got that all done. Next week or next time, Marilyn. Yes. We're going to do watermelon and feta salad. Yeah, we had this watermelon salad is really good. Watermelons are, you'll be able to get fresh watermelons now probably right through to the fall. So this is a very good dish. And with feta and some Kalamata olives and all kinds of things. It really makes yeah, it very put interesting. Some arugula in it, right? Yeah. So, so I th it's very refreshing, and I think we got to talk about, you know, again, what's local, what's fresh right now, and a nice watermelon feta arugula salad. You uh, is absolutely wonderful. It's in. It's the thing going on right now. So try. We're going to try that, and we're going to try. You all like uh, Caesar salad. Everybody likes, except my wife. But Caesar salad, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to put a twist to it. We're going to grill the uh, romaine uh, lettuce. We're going to slice it and grill it, and then we're going to put the put this sauce over it, and we'll decorate it and do other a few other things with it. So that's what we're going to do the next time around. So uh, enjoy and uh, enjoy you know. all the farmers markets and enjoy all this wonderful fresh produce. Yes, and uh, we uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.